hummingbirds off the deep end here at the CCA workbench. Yes. We got moving parts, Bub. <laughs> I'm really excited about this one. Well, we oh. do. Well, you know, Kobe is a great fish here in Florida. I mean, uh, we have a great spring run. They run up and down both coastlines, even through the Keys, and we can target them in real shallow water up there where Patty, Patty lives and where my parents live. Uh, the water's really clear and clean, and when they're running from, you know, the, from the east to the west, we just, you know, troll up and down the beach and look for them. And when we see them, you know, we we cast something to them. And we'll use a seven foot spinning rod, seven and a half foot spinning rod, something we can cast a long way with 20, 30 pound braid and 50 to 60 pound leader. You know, depending on the fish size fish that you're normally catching up there, you use big stuff because you never know you're going to see a big fish. And what you'll do is you'll run through a progression. Um, most guys like to throw an eel. So let's see. Yeah, we'll get one of these eels up. Yeah, maybe. Oh, God, dog. Oh. Yeah, here he is. Whoop, whoop, <laughs> whoop. And he got away. <laughs> got away. Let's see. Let me go in here real easy, Dave, with a nice, easy. Oh, look at that son of a gun. He's he trying to bite me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, I hope you Dave? Don't. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you Dave. See, they're slimy. Most of the time, we'll put them in a, in a thing of sand. And once they get coated in sand, you can easily put a hook in them. And what you'll do is you'll sit, you'll put a circle hook right up through their nose, you know? Yeah. Right up through their nose, like one of these big, thick circle hooks right here. If he don't quit moving, <laughs> we're gonna do that to him. No, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna, I'm gonna let him go. <laughs> he, he, he made it. I had to buy this one at a Chinese market. That's a good place to get eels. You know, if you can't find eels uh, at a bait store, a lot of bait stores won't carry them. But in the springtime, you can always find them at a Chinese market because they're, they're people, <laughs> they like to eat them. You know, they're made to be eaten. So what you'll do is you'll either throw them that eel or you'll throw them a live mullet. Now, where do you hook the eel? In the nose? No, underneath the chin, the chin. and out the top. All right. Yeah, yeah, and I don't want to hurt one of these. But no, I got gonna, it. Because I'm going to let them go. Anyway, but uh, you can use them. This is this is a, a cobia jig that's made to put a bait on it. You can either put a, oh. a catfish or a, even a big plastic eel if you want to, or you can put a live eel on a jig like that. It's got a little spinny thing on there to attract them. The good thing about cobia, especially, you know, in the in the in the fall and when they're out on the wrecks and stuff is they can be very curious you know they like to hang around uh big things anyway turtles whale sharks um rays. big manta rays especially so you know they orient to those things and a lot of times when you, you'll come up to a wreck or something you can run your motors a little bit you know rev your motors up and a cobia will come up off the wreck to check you out and right. that's when you have a live bait ready or one of these jigs and these you know a jig is is really uh, a great bait to always have on a spinning rod in your boat in Florida. Because I just want you to know, I'm at the corner of my eye. I see this eel <laughs> and crawling around on the floor, and I'm trying to stay focused. Yeah. And I'm they're really very, having. They're a hard very, time. they're very hardy. They're very they hardy. hardy. The guy when I bought them, I said these, these things are going to be okay in the in my car, right in the bag. And he goes, Oh, you'll find they're very hardy. <laughs> <laughs> and they are. These so are one last question leader size what size leader do you want to typically use well over here on the east coast we can get away with 20 pound tests usually uh -huh. um, but if you're in a place where there's big ones 30 to 50 pound even 60 pound you know fluorocarbon is a good thing to use I uh, guess especially if the water's real clear you what you want to do is you want to, you don't want to hit bang them in the head with the bait either a lot of times you know a guy will see a fish and they'll try to throw it right at the fish uh, if you're using a big heavy jig and that thing hits the water like a, a bomb it can spook them sometimes. Right. So you want to be out, you know, four or five feet, maybe six feet in front of the fish when he hits, and, and, so that you can, so you don't, so you don't have to, you know, worry about <laughs> spooking the fish. And and uh, same way with a bait, you don't want to knock him in the head with it. You know, you want to get about four or five feet out in front of him and let him go down on it and, and get a get a hold of it. And if you can see him eat it, you know, if you have a bait that you can see him eat, you have a lot better chance of hooking him. You know, if you have a really uh, heavy jig that sinks out of sight real quick. You know, you're, a lot of times you got to feel them eat it, and, and it's a little, a little rougher hookup. All right. Well, I'm gonna sneak around here and help this guy get back into the water while <laughs> Bree, while Bree goes off into the, uh, our next region. Oh, come on, buddy. Just wow, take it guys. easy. Just take it easy. <laughs> I am distracted as well. Dave, control your eels, will you?